Welcome to Midwest Sportsnet. I'm Joey McWilliams, and it is a privilege today to be joined on the summit by Trish Sedlick, who is in her 16th season at Bellevue. And coach, the Bruins are off to yet another good start, 3-0 and on the season. And you've done it by playing some very good opponents, which is going to be a theme of this particular interview anyway, because you're playing strong opponents all the way through your schedule. You start off the win, though, in the Big Sky Tournament, uh, taking on Montana Tech. You get a three-set victory over Montana Tech, who, by the way, is a, that's their only loss this season. They're 6-1, and one. a 3-1 over Carroll, and then a sweep over Eastern Oregon, who was also a preseason top 10 team. So tell us about the opening to your season. Yeah, every year we take a big trip. And something that we take pride in our program is we're going to have the players not only experience a tough tournament, but also a wonderful place to go and, and see something that they may not be able to do once they graduate college and get their big girl jobs. So we, we wanted to take a nice trip out there. It's been our second time in this program that we've gone out there and taken them also to Yellowstone. Uh, so that was beautiful for them to experience um, but we also pick a tournament that is not only tough, but it also prepares us for the end of the year. And those teams for sure um, are the ones that we normally see out at Sioux City and uh, Montana Tech. A lot of those coaches are good friends of mine. So it was always a great to see them and, and have that networking going and also something that we haven't been able to do in over a year. So haven't been able to travel, haven't been able to do those fun things with the group. Um Montana Tech was a team that we thought uh, was a mirror image of us. Uh, we know that they had some big hitters in certain um, areas that we see it every day in practice. Um, it was nice to come out with that win. They had a football team out there that <laughs> came in the first few points that I thought, oh boy. <laughs> uh, and we were the only match that night. Uh, so he was kind enough to allow us to come in and, and play before the tournament. Um, and then, uh, but after a few points, the, it, it got a little quiet up on their stands. And I, I, we just talked about it today, how our players, I wouldn't want to meet them in a dark alley when they, you know, got pushed a little, they, they did all the yelling back and, uh, to support our players out on the court. So it was neat to have, um, that we had like three or four family members in the crowd. So that was neat to have our players <laughs> make up for the fact of 50 football players sitting there. Um, had a great uh, uh, match that uh, day. And then going into the next day against Carroll, we thought, you know, it wasn't looking like we were the previous night. We were um, kind of hesitant on things. Um, but something that we did so well this weekend was we played with poise. Um, something that we work with our uh, sports psychologist, Dr. Larry Woodman, uh, who also works with Creighton volleyball and Creighton basketball. Mm -hmm. And used to be with the Huskers and Concordia, who I think you've had on your your <laughs> show too. Um, but he has been wonderful with us bringing out the best of our culture and something that um, we want to not only teach our players to work with each other on the court, but also in life, how to talk to each other in conflict, how to talk to each other in tight situations. Um, and so uh, the acknowledgement the excitement, uh, the energy, all of that came into play and they looked very comfortable out there. So that's something that we're hoping just keeps getting better and better because we're going to be pushed, um, which then after Carol, you know, dropped a set, uh, I think that there was some, okay, we need, this isn't us, uh, got back rolling and then played Eastern who I, I don't want to say that, yeah, we beat them in three. They were missing some players due to COVID um, I would say we took advantage of those spots. Um, I got to say that that program is a wonderful program. Uh, Kaki is a great coach. She, uh, to, to have nine players in a tournament like that, uh, very little subs, um, and also go head to head that close with a lot of teams. That's, that says a lot for the program. So luckily we were able to snag that win with them. Um, I know she said we, we took advantage of all their weaknesses, so that was good. <laughs> um, but not to discredit us, um, we didn't um, we, we didn't play down to their level. We, we, we kept control of the match. So I'm hoping uh, going into the rest of the season, this was a great learning lesson. 
Well, quality wins for the team, and you're getting quality performances from your players as well. And with respect to the other programs as you're talking about, and I appreciate your respect for them as well, your players are doing a good enough job out there too. Olivia Gallus, second in the NAIA right now in assists per set with 11.9. That's a solid number in any year, but that has to be a good start for her and for your team. Steve Field is my uh, setting coach, and if you look at our program, we've had All-American after All-American after All-American in the setting position. So it is a pretty coveted role, uh, whoever we bring in. Um, Olivia is no different. Um, Olivia has not only been one of the hardest working um, setters, but not to discredit anyone else, but it's more she has had to really work hard to get to where she's at. And Steve, we call him the setter, setter whisperer. <laughs> a lot of local high schools bring their setters here to have him coach them. Um, so she has done a great job to raise her game to get to where um, she's just bettered herself. She's not one of those, oh, I'm an All-American. I'll just sit back. She really works every day at her craft. Uh, one thing that she's worked on is her attacking. So I know she has raised her level on that and she raised her numbers on that as well. Um, but she definitely just makes everyone else around her better. Um, she's also not a factor on the block, which I know she had a lot of blocks, big ones <laughs> too. Uh, so in the weight room, um, uh, the kid came off of a season last year of just dis dislocating this tendon here, which you kind of need to set. <laughs> She broke her nose on the back of a, a player's head. Uh, so she's <laughs> she's brutal out there, but you will not see anyone work harder uh, than, than that setter. And I know she has a lot of fans, even with opponent coaches. They like her. They don't like her all the time. <laughs> <laughs> she's fun to watch when someone else is playing her. Is that yes. right? Okay. <laughs> I understand. Well, you know, and a number of other players. Let me mention one more. Eve Fountain has uh, started off well for you again this season. 4.1 kills per set. And that's impressive in and of itself, again, because just outside the top 10 in the NAI through the first week, week-ish uh, of action. But she's also averaging about 4.4 digs per set. And that's a pretty good number no matter where you are. Oh yeah, both of our outsides, and I'll talk a little bit about Sierra Ethan, who who also is her opposite. Um, uh, so Eve is our L1, uh, Sierra is our L2. And those two, um, yeah, you can have a couple good uh, players, but those two compete with each other and make each other better. Um, they also um, have wonderful personalities on the team. Eve is a um, real kind of flashy, slap the floor, dive on the knees kind of thing. And um, Sierra is our calm, uh, small town kind of kid that keeps a good balance. Um, I, I think she has matured so much to where she she doesn't waste all that energy that that Eve still is kind of getting out of the uh, out of the gates like a freshman. She's technically still kind of a freshman, um, but that's what uh, I'm so proud of both of them. Uh, because they they just every day they're maturing more with their game, whether it's a shot, whether it's off the block, whether it, they, they don't always have to have the, the flashy thing. Um, I know that they both have high ceilings still. I know that um, what I'm most proud of Sierra is just to keep her. She keeps her head a little bit more. Eve still kind of gets real mad <laughs> if she gets <laughs> blocked. Um, but that's the passion in both of them. Um, but uh, Eve, I've known, I, I've watched her since sophomore year in high school, and I know she's always kind of had that uh, kind of thing in high school, which coming from Millard North has been a wonderful program stacked with a lot of players. She's had that little back seat of this player going to a higher level. Eve's a big fish in a, in a small pond, and a lot of our players that do come to Bellevue are kind of those same things. Eve really wants it. Eve really wants to to be that um, person, and and but she also has a balance of being a great teammate too. So both of them offer a lot to our program. You have a, a number of quality players on that program, I know, and and it has to be fun to watch too. And, and I I think it's important to to stick with something you mentioned there too. You you've seen her play for a long time through high school and uh, on the roster, I, I think I counted six players, just uh, Bellevue and Omaha alone that were on your roster. And how, how big is that for you? Not only to get to see those players come up because it has to be a hotbed for volleyball, but also to be able to keep them there in the program. 
it's a uh, it's a hit and miss. Sometimes there's players that want to stick around home and and just go you know across the street basically. Um, Jackie Eiple is another one that just kind of across the street from Bellevue. I can I can see Bellevue West basically from my window. <laughs> Um, but she, uh, a lot of those players wanted to stick around. And, and one thing, even back when I was a player, I, I was a local player here and I st- stuck around and went to college of St. Mary. I, I wanted my family to see me play. And sometimes that may not be their top factor in high school, but when it comes down to, um, games after games, you know, it's not the same as calling your parents. It's their parents got to see you play and make that play. Your grandparents got to see you play. That makes a lot of a, a big difference in your college decision. Sometimes it, it may not click right away in your head. Uh, <laughs> but when it comes down to after the games where you get to go to dinner with them and, and talk about it at the dinner table with your family, it's pretty cool. And it's even that much better when you have players that are of the caliber that you are recruiting there, and it makes a big deal. We're speaking now with Trish Sedlick from Bellevue. In her 16th season with the program, and Coach, with the three wins that you have to start the 21 season, uh, that puts your win total at 555. That's a nice kind of milestone number there, 555 right there, a 75% winning percentage that's very impressive coach to have that kind of longevity and have that kind of winning percentage to go with it. Uh, talk about what it means to you then to, to get to do that and, and get to stay at the same program for a while. It's uh well, first of all, hiring great assistants. Uh, we've had a lot of great assistants that have, um, that we've been blessed with. Um, a lot of them have gone on to bigger programs and bigger jobs, either head coaching um, or just another assistant at a higher level. So that's one thing. Um, our, our culture, just um, making it another family atmosphere for them, whether it's trips, whether it's, um, you know, I don't know, they, the girls talk about gear and stuff, but um, making it a family atmosphere is something that um, is something that we, we strive for. Um, we fight like family. We, we <laughs> love like family. So it, it comes with the territory. Um, doing this for this long, it has its rewards for sure. Um, we get to see a lot of these players get married and go on, or I've just had three or four just get new jobs. And, uh, one of our, uh, I can't remember when she graduated. I keep losing track of when they leave. And I'm just like, God, you're just here yesterday. But, (laughs) um, Marilyn Mozena is, uh, we call her Mo. Uh, she just got her first, first coaching gig down at Avila college in Kansas city. And to have another player be, you know, 24, 25 years old and stepping in a role just like I did, we'll just say a few years ago, (laughs) (laughs) Uh, it's way cool. And to have her have her first two wins um, is is really awesome. And to say that you can do this at at a young age, you can do this. You got to believe in yourself, got to have that confidence. And we have kept the same thing um, over the years here. We just been consistent when we see players, we look at what kind of player they are. The talent is there. We can also train, but are they good people? Are they good citizens? Are they strong students? Would they be a person in our program that wouldn't be selfish or cause problems or not be eligible? Um, So we do a lot of homework. Um, There are players that come through here that, um, you know, that that work out great and become all Americans too. So it's really neat. Well, Coach, then let, let me ask you about uh, moving on from here then in 2021 because, first off, it's just enjoyable to get to see volleyball again. It really is. It's nice to get to talk about sports here in 2021 and uh, getting all kinds of, of activity throughout the college realm kicked off and, and served and tipped off. And however you start a, a contest, it's, it's fun to get to see that. So the remainder of this week, a little bit later on this week, you have the Concordia Triangular. I know we talked about that. Coach Bolt's team, uh, we – I think we've got them number five in, in our ranking. Uh, so the Concordia Triangular, you head there, you take on Concordia Baker as well. Next weekend, you're hosting Indiana Wesleyan uh, ranked team, McPherson receiving votes, Westmont ranked team. The next week, ranked Northwestern from Iowa. Then out to Surprise Arizona, ranked Providence team, receiving votes, Embry team. Of course, the host team in OUAZ. Oh, and then there's that North Star schedule too that uh, eventually will get here. Uh, Coach, uh, is it uh, is it true that that you are the one that scheduled all this? And so, if the the yeah. players look at it, they go, "Okay, that's that's where we need to look." Just right there. Yeah, I think you <laughs> forgot Oklahoma City and Montana. Well, well yeah, that's, that's 
you, you've got to get into the North Star schedule, and that's in yeah. there somewhere too. I know. Yeah. <laughs> no, we love uh, pressure is a privilege, and that's something that we talk about. Um, we want that. We want that. We want to be able to say we played that team. We know we're going to be tested, and and you know what? We also know that we might w- lose. Um, how are we going to deal with it? How are we going to have um, things to talk about and and learn from, so that when we get to that um, position at nationals, we aren't thinking, "Gosh darn it, I wish we did this," or "I wish we had not." Uh, we I wish we corrected this. Um, the feeling of not getting out of pool play, and I I, I don't know if I'm like. Uh, what's her name that never got the Emmy for the soap opera? <laughs> I, I know. Okay, I'm I'm sorry that I know this, but that's Susan Lucci, and <laughs> yes. I don't know if the, what that gonna... says about me, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. You win nothing. Um, nothing. I feel like, I mean, we just haven't gone out of pool play, and at what point? What do we got to do? So we have really buckled down, and I don't want to say we have the group because I don't know. Um, I want anything can happen. Injuries can happen. You know, we, we just didn't have it that night or whatever. Um, maybe we play our best and we still lose, but that is something that um, we really want to get out of pool play. And we, um, we have talked about it. And this year we just said, <laughs> we're not talking about it anymore. We're going to let it happen. We're having fun. Winning is fun. Um, but we're really uh, getting after the culture part of it having the players play free. Um, I was not a coach that probably uh, that I know I wasn't a coach that allowed them to play free. I wanted things to be perfect. I wanted the things to be um, done a certain way. And I think when you add kids in your life of your own, and when you learn from your mistakes, you start to see these are just kids still too. And we got to give them the best scenario to where they can play without feeling they're going to get, you know, chomped on every single time. So playing free and allowing them to have an error, correct it. How can we correct it? The other part of it is that we have so much depth that we utilize those subs and we make them feel just as important. So that's been our year. Well, coach, and I think there is a, there's no reason to think you won't be in Sioux city again. Uh, and and again, when you do get to that point, there there will be no way you can look back and go, well, you know, we just didn't schedule tough enough. Uh, right. you, you're gonna, you've got that that tough schedule ahead of you, Coach. Thank you so much for taking thank time you. with us today here. And I, and I know that uh, again, Bellevue three and zero right now. And I will say that over the course of this, this isn't. I'll, I'll remember the interview. It's the first time we've had an Erica Kane reference. Uh, in uh, any of the summits, uh, I've been dive bombed by a fly the whole time. <laughs> I but saw I, have, I know it's just, <laughs> but I have enjoyed this. My time whole recruiting with you. list behind <laughs> yeah. me. I mean, hopefully, you can't zoom in on that. I, uh, yeah, I don't know. Uh, I don't know. I don't know how that works. But yeah, it's it's just one of those things. I have had fun with you, Coach. Thank you so much for taking time Thank with you. us today. We will continue to follow you along as the twenty one season goes on, and hopefully, get to visit again a little bit later on in there, Coach Trish Sedlick from Bellevue. Thank you for being with us on the summit. Thank you very much.